These 20 total war campaign tips will transform you from a noob to a master. Tip number one is that you have to capture entire provinces. And you have to start taking over the province that you spawn in. And when you own a full province, you can select the buffs that you want. You can choose between taxing extra money, get more loyalty, which will help prevent civil wars, or get free food and extra public order, which will help against rebellion. And the other two you should never select. Here's a nice bonus tip. If you click on these steps, you will see a nice overview of where your provinces are, your armies are, and which one you can still move showed with the green bar. Tip number two is check who your allies are. Try to trade with any possible faction that you're good with. That will give you a lot more income. Choose from here who you want to declare war on. And this will give you a good direction on how you can play your campaigns. So make sure you always start your campaign with a plan. In my scenario, I want to destroy the Carthaginians, team up with Rome, and trade with my surrounding factions. Tip number three will allow you to make even more money from trading. And you can do that by recruiting early game agents and send them out into the unknown areas. This way they will discover new factions. And once you have discovered new factions, you can start trading with me. In Rome 2 you got three different type of agents. You got the spy. Make sure to send the spy in the direction that you don't want to push or conquer. The same counts for this one. And make sure to send the champion towards your enemies because they can potentially kill the enemy generals and agents with a successful assassination. And the other benefits of having an agent early game is that you can steal food from your enemies. You just have to go into the enemy territory, select the stance that you want to get into and it will start generating you food. Agents can also really boost your tax income and boost your public order and they can also be very powerful in just standing in the enemy territory so that you can see what the enemy is doing where they are making an army and planning to possibly attack you tip number four is use ambush stands a lot of people know about this but almost no one uses it and there is a way to make the ambush stands overpowered so the first thing you need to do is make a small army and place them close to the enemy front line and then put your strong army in front of it in ambush stands preferably in the woods this way you will bait the enemy in attacking your smaller army but your enemy is not able to see your ambush army and this way you can ambush your enemy and take down strong armies very efficiently tip number six is going a little bit further into that everyone just got to know the different travel modes you have the normal stance which is the standard then you got scout mode this way you will be able to travel long distances but if at the end of the turn your enemy attacks that army you will be getting ambushed the other option is to fortify let's say there are enemy armies coming towards you and you want to give yourself a defensive advantage then you have to use fortify mode and this will give you a small camp to fight your battles in which is pretty useful tip number six is don't overextend because it's really easy if you have a strong army to take over all the sediments in your path but you need to watch out for that because this can lead to weak protection to the sediments that you just took over once you take over city you need to repair the buildings convert them or upgrade them but because you have no army protecting it it could be taken over in three turns by your enemy and now you wasted all your money into buildings and repair costs tip number seven goes into this and that is only put high taxes for fully developed provinces with high growth and stable public order next up we got the tip make sure to avoid civil wars by making sure this symbol is above zero and if it's not above zero make sure to secure your loyalty but that will cost also some money the next tip has also to do with civil wars and that is when you feel a civil war is coming up you can go to the map click on politics and you can see the different political parties and that will show you what area and which generals you will lose if a civil war breaks out and that means basically a whole political party will be your enemy a lot of people find tip number eight a waste and that is don't be afraid to disband units or armies because a lot of people will say well well, I spend a lot of money to get all these units. Why would I disband them? If you don't have problems with your income, there's no need to disband units or armies, unless you really want to stack on cash. But let's say you're struggling to get enough income, you should definitely disband units or army because they are really expensive. And talking about saving money, did you know that companies will adjust their prices based on the place you search from or live in? And you will save a lot of money with Surfshark VPN, especially when you're booking a flight, hotels, rentals, and just regular everyday items. And with Surfshark VPN, you can change your location to 3200 servers in 100 different countries and this will also allow you to stream your favorite movies that are only available in certain countries the other problem that this vpn solved for me is that i always had a ton of virus and virus alerts and they all just stacked on top of each other until my pc or laptop just couldn't work anymore and surfshark vpn has an antivirus software that shields your devices from viruses and malware and you only need one account to protect all your devices you can compare surfshark with other vpns and you will see that it's very affordable Affordable. And especially when you use my code FIGHTME because you will get an extra 4 months for free by clicking the link in the description or in the comment section. And just so you know, it has also a 30 day money back guarantee. So this is the perfect moment to get yourself a VPN and start protecting your data.
The next step is all about buildings. The most important buildings are the ones that provide growth to your province or settlement. If you want to upgrade your town, you first need a lot of growth, but it will also speed up replenishment, boost your public order, and it will work against corruption and rebellion. And if I had to rank the building types, I'll have to put the unique buildings at number one, because most of the times, unique buildings provide a lot of wealth, growth, food, or income. It's basically a much stronger normal building. After that comes growth buildings. After that, you have buildings that generate your income. At number four, you have food. And at the very end, you have the military buildings. Those are most of the times the least important one. But I know most of people upgrade the military buildings first because they want to have the better and stronger units, which is understandable. Tip number 10 is use lords and heroes to boost public order. Just make sure they're standing in your settlement. Tip number 12 is when you see that your settlement is going to get attacked in the next turn, so recruiting extra units will be too late, you have the option to recruit multiple lords at that one settlement. And that will give you a couple of general units to play with. And most of the times it will give you an option what general you want and you always have to choose the most expensive units for multiplayer so in my scenario those are these four units because they're also the strongest with the highest potential the next tip i recently discovered so apparently you can send characters on a mission and you can let them do all types of stuff and this can be very powerful but you got to have money for that for the next tip you're in a scenario where you need to face off a lot of armies or a civil war breaks out and you are in deep trouble military wise and you got like two or three stacks sitting next to each other the only way to basically take them out is by destroying these armies one by one and how can you do that well basically use agents to stun one of the armies and then attack the other one and this way the stunned army will not be reinforcing the other army that you're attacking the next tip is for when you're in the battle and you basically won but instead of ending the battle you continue and you have to finish off the routing unit because if you don't finish them off completely the unit will survive and replenish later on and you really don't want that and you can do that with triple speed